Wednesday, April 17th, and this is the third day that they will be attempting to pick a jury for Trump's trial. Now, this is the trial that involves the hush money that was paid to Stormy Daniels. So it's not one of the major trials, but there are facts that are going to come out in this trial that could conceivably force Donald Trump off the ballot at the end of the year. So in any event, jury selection has started, and on the very first day, 50 people stepped forward and said they could not come to a decision. They would not be able to put aside their personal feelings and come to a decision. Now, I served on four juries in my time, And there was one case when I was on the jury, it involved an automobile accident where nobody was killed, but several people ended up in the hospital severely injured. And one of the automobiles, the people that were on trial in that automobile, were two couples, and they were married, but not to each other. So they were out having a good time, And they had been drinking and doing some other things in the car. And they had this accident and hurt people in the other car. And I was 28 years old at that time. Married, wife and two kids. Had a good job, right? I was a respectable citizen. And I was excused from being on that jury because the defense attorney felt that I was too young to understand the situation that these couples were in. So I use that as an example of the way jury selection can go. You could be the greatest person in the world and have a totally open mind, but defense attorneys and prosecutors have feelings about jurors, and they are looking for the crack in the personalities of jurors. And they are doing that to ensure a fair trial or not such a fair trial because they want to pick people who they believe will be on their side as opposed to the opposition side. But the bottom line is, when I think about this entire thing, and these 50 people that stepped up for one reason or another, they could have been for Trump, or against Trump, and they couldn't overlook their feelings and be impartial. I don't think that there's any instance where jurors don't come together without some pre-existing condition in their lives that could affect their decision-making. But the object of being a juror is to set aside your personal feelings and to be able to look at the facts in the case and come to a decision that might be counter to everything that you've been brought up to believe. You don't have to be an expert in a lot of different things when you're on jury duty. You have to listen to the facts of the case, and you have to make a determination whether those facts lead to guilt or innocence. It's not about your pre-existing feelings. You may have feelings. You may have feelings that are counter to guilt or innocence. But when you're in the courtroom and when you listen to the facts and when you listen to the witnesses, you have to be able to overcome whatever feelings, whatever thoughts you had about this case when you went into the courtroom and agreed to be an impartial juror. So I respect the fact that these people, many of them just 
not willing to change their minds. Others just don't want to serve in a particular case like this. And it's going to be very difficult to get 18 people. They're going after 12 jurors and 6 alternates. That is a very unusual number. Because in all the cases that I was involved in, there were 12 jurors and 2 alternates. And I only sat, of the 4 cases that I was selected for juror, I only sat on 2 of them. Two of them I got excused from. And when you're sitting in a room deliberating, it's very difficult to be impartial in a sense of that the way you feel about guilt or innocence and the way other people feel about guilt or innocence. Because when you sit in a room with 12 people who have to decide something important, now I was never on any criminal case in a sense, like murder or big-time robbery or anything like that. My cases involved accidents of some kind and decisions that had to be made for the awarding of money. So I wasn't on any cases where lives were at stake, really. But you still have to be impartial. You still have to recognize the facts. And in one of those cases, I was distinctly the juror that was out of sorts. It was a case where a young man got hurt in an accident on the street because the street was poorly lit and there was an obstruction that he ran into. But all of the other jurors, with one exception, felt that the child who got hurt didn't deserve any money because he was a young kid gallivanting around and wasn't paying attention to what he was doing. And so he got injured and they felt he wasn't entitled to any money. And I and one other gentleman on the court, on the juror, could not persuade the other 10 people that this kid deserved the money, that the company that had left some of their equipment out in the street in the way was not at fault. And maybe they were at fault, but the kid's fault was worse. So I leave you with that this morning. Jury selection is a bitch. Have a great day. Take care. Bye. <laughs>